So I'm assuming you clicked on this video because you want more sales on eBay. Seeing so many other resellers absolutely crushing it. And you sit there asking yourself, why can't I have more sales like them? And that's something that I understand because that was me for the longest time. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Josh, AKA a lot of Josh and in the past month I've been able to increase my eBay sales by about 55 to 56 percent and I wanted to share with you a few things that I've been doing a few things that I've adjusted that I really think contributed to the growth of my eBay business so I'll definitely get into what I've been doing on the eBay platform directly but I actually wanted to start this video off talking about mindset I think mindset is a huge part of the foundation when it comes to building your reselling business. Once you understand how you're thinking about your reselling, that gives you the opportunity to take a step back and make the best decision in terms of what changes you want to implement to your eBay business. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is something called fixed mindset, which is the kind of thinking that I personally was stuck in for really the first two, three years that I was reselling. So a fixed mindset would be convincing ourselves that our abilities are fixed traits. So I'd say something like, I am really bad at reselling because that's just who I am. I lack the discipline. I've always grown up being a procrastinator. So that's why I can't get listings done today. I'll just have to push it off until later. And also just comparing yourself with other people's situations and convincing yourself that their situations are much better than yours. So that would lead me to say something like my thrift stores are absolute garbage. Their thrift store prices are so much better than mine. Their area has so many cool things like garage sales that my garage sales just don't have. And that kind of thinking just spirals out of control real quick. Especially when something gets difficult, typically doesn't end well. It usually ends up with you giving up on whatever you're working on. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the growth mindset where we start convincing ourselves and really start believing that our abilities can be developed and we as people can improve and grow and that kind of thinking builds resiliency and that resiliency is extremely important especially when things get difficult when you hit a wall when you're not improving or growing as fast as you are hoping for and it helps you clear up a lot of mental real estate which gives you the ability to take a step back look at your business as a whole and really decide what changes you need to make what actions you need to take to move forward from there once I realized and accepted that I was trapped in a fixed mindset, something that helped me adjust the way I was thinking was to change the verbiage I was using when having inner dialogues with myself. So if my inner voice was saying something like, my sales are not where I want them to be, why won't my sales improve? Just changing a few of the words and saying something like, my sales are not where I want them to be yet. And instead of asking yourself why, you ask yourself how can my sales improve to get there? And just slightly changing that verbiage to telling yourself that you're not quite there yet. And instead of asking yourself, why aren't you approving? asking yourself how you're going to improve that really puts you into an action oriented mindset and that shift in mindset and just slightly adjusting how I was thinking about my reselling business let me take a step back and really decide what was best for me and what changes I needed to implement to really move my business forward so let's talk about those changes those adjustments I made that I think contributed to the 55% increase in my eBay sales so the first thing I did was to turn best offer on all my listings and I really had to force myself to be more willing to accept offers 15 to 20% below my listing price. I also want to include seller initiated offers into this as well. You can see that 41.8% of total sales came from best offers and 24.9% of my sales in the past 31 days came from seller initiated offers. So that's when you have a watcher on a listing and you're sending them that offer. So the fact that 66 0.7% or two thirds of my total sales came from accepting or sending out offers. That was a huge game changer for me. I feel like my cost of goods is low enough that I can afford to accept offers 15 to 20% below asking price. In addition to all of those eBay fees, of course, I'm not going to tell you like exactly what numbers, what percentages to use in terms of the recommendations that I'm giving you. Just kind of play around with the numbers, play around with what you're comfortable with and go from there 
there. It took me like three, four years to figure out what I'm comfortable with and probably a couple months from now, my business model and what I'm comfortable with and what I'm doing is gonna change slightly. But in the past 31 days, like 15 to 20% below listing price is typically the range in terms of the offers that I was accepting. The second thing that I did, I started promoting my listings much more aggressively than I was. Typically, I promote anywhere from like one to 2%, maybe 3% if I was feeling like super fancy back in the day. But now I'm hovering around four to 5%. Sometimes I'll even bump it up to 7% depending on the category. But once again, that number that you're using is something that you need to be comfortable with. It needs to be something that you take into consideration when you're buying inventory, when you're sourcing stuff. You need to try to have like a rough estimate of what all of these additional fees is gonna cost because that's gonna factor into what's taken out of your gross sales to ultimately give you what your net profit is. So for me, on average, four to five percent seems to be a good sweet spot. That's like what I'm comfortable with. And if sales are really slow that day, then I'll consider bumping it up to 7%. I don't think I've ever promoted more than 7%, but if you're not promoting your listings right now, unfortunately, as bad as it sounds, since other sellers are promoting their listings, it's almost like you have to promote your listings just to level out the playing field. So if you're not promoting your listings, I'd recommend at least trying out one to 2% and seeing if that's something that works for you. The third thing that I adjusted was to heavily focus on sell-through rate. And if I had to guess, this probably had the biggest impact in terms of increasing my sales. So sell-through rate, essentially just trying to break it down as simply as I can, is taking how many sold listings there are for an item that you're looking at, divide that by number of active listings, multiply that by 100 to get a sell-through percentage. And essentially, this is a way to calculate how quickly your item's gonna sell. You wanna get that sell-through percentage as close to 100 as possible. 100 plus, best case scenario. I was actually curious on what sell-through percentage people were looking for, so I ran a poll on my YouTube community page and 50 to 100% seemed to be the majority. But my biggest advice or recommendation is to start taking sell-through rate into consideration. You don't have to have perfect math, but when you're looking at sold comps, when you're at a thrift store or a garage sale, also look at and compare it to the active listings and try to determine what the sell-through rate is and that'll give you a better idea on how fast or how slow an item's gonna sell on eBay. But definitely start focusing on sell-through rate and taking that into consideration because if you wanna increase your eBay sales, you have to list quality items and if you wanna buy quality items, you have to buy items with high sell-through rate. The fourth thing I wanted to include and you've probably already heard of this before because it's the simplest of advice but the hardest one to adhere to, and that is to list consistently. So when it comes to listing consistently, I've heard people talk about a listing number goal or a listing dollar amount goal. And something that I did this past month was to push both of those aside. And don't get me wrong, like listing an X number of items a day or listing an X dollar amount per day is extremely important, but both of those go out the window if you're not listing consistently. If you don't have that habit, like what's the point of setting those goals if you're just not gonna hit them? So something that really helped me was to set aside two hours every single day dedicated to listing. So that doesn't include photographing. Um, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I do everything in batches, a bunch of items and store them on my computer so they're ready for listings. But definitely push yourself to dedicate and block off certain periods of time. If you're part-time or full-time, figure out how many hours a week you want to dedicate to listing. And don't get discouraged if you're listing like one or two items an hour because that was me in the beginning. I am someone who gets easily distracted and I really had to push myself and figure out different ways and methods to really try to tunnel vision and focus better. Eventually, that habit will develop. You just have to push through that initial transition phase and you'll get there. At the end of the day, there really isn't a super secret sauce when it comes to reselling on eBay. I've shared with you a few things that I've done to help try to increase my sales. You know, that's be more willing to accept offers, send out those offers as well, promote your listings, Focus on sell-through rate because if you're buying quality listings, you're going to list quality listings. And the most important thing, the hardest one to stick to 
and the simplest of them all is to list consistently. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and check out this video here. I talk about three things I wish someone told me when I first started reselling. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.